we went to Saipan. There, Saipan was one heck of a rough place. We were on Saipan a long time. The day we moved up, got off the ship, and got on there. At that time, I was in Anna Tank Company. I switched uh, from A Company to Anna Tank Company while I was in Highway, anyway. I was in Anna Tank Company. And when we started moving up, Somebody said, well, this is June 26th. I said, what do you know? I had a birthday three days ago. <laughs> and we moved up, and the old company commander told us all to hunker down, said he's going to take his platoon officers for reconnaissance. He took his four or five officers up front, and one guy raised his head up to four, and he was shot right in the head and killed. He was the best lieutenant out of the bunch, the best. He was from Georgia. He was a football player. Really a nice guy. And Captain Rupel, I remember his name. He come back and the body of the lieutenant was laying on the stretcher. And Captain Rupel went over and sat on the bank of a ditch and hung his head sitting there alone by himself. I walked up, I walked over there and I talked to Captain Rupel, tried to console him. And he told me, he said, I'm very sorry. Because that lieutenant stuck his head up too high and a jab killed him. But that's, what happened to Captain Rupel after that, I don't know. He, he stayed with the company, but he was very sorry he took the lieutenant there for reconnaissance. We moved up after that. We moved up to the front line, and we stayed there 15 days without a bath. And after we was relieved, we went back behind the line and they had another suit of clothes for us. And we washed up the best we could. You had to pour wa water in your helmet and wash up the best you could and shave. And then went back on the line and uh, that, I just believe in July, sometime in July. Anyway, we went on the front line about five o'clock in the evening and they put us shoulder to shoulder and there, uh, we fought all night long. I fired a 37 millimeter anti-tank gun all night long. Fired up all my all our ammunition that we had, and I called for more ammunition. They said it's all over, and by that time it was getting daylight. Out in front of my gun position, there were Japs and they had dug a little trench up trying to get up to us. 
but one sergeant told me, said, fire down, your, down as lower your gun barrel as low as you can and fire that Anna personnel. And I did, and the next morning was dead jabs. I didn't count them. I, I don't believe in it. Going around and bragging about how many I killed. A lot of people say, "Oh, I killed so many." Well, I didn't do that. I don't believe in it. Those Japanese soldiers in front of your position, how far were they? Would you say from your actual anti-tank gun? Uh, maybe 10, 15 feet. Just not too forward. I'd say about 10 feet. So right in front? Yeah, they were right in front. But when I, when that sergeant said, Fire, Lower your barrel down as low as you can get it and fire anti-personnel. It's like a shotgun shell. And it, when it fired it, it just spread out. Little pellets spread out. Got up the next. You got out the next morning when everything calmed down. You got out there and walked around and looked to see what happened. You saw what. You see a bunch of Japanese dead. And some over on another part of the island near the ocean. They ripped apart. Somebody had fired, I guess, a machine gun, and they ripped them apart. There's one little boy in our outfit was put on a machine gun, and he fired all night long, just like I did with the Anna tank gun. We fired all night long. Rifles, mach uh, machine guns, and a tank gun. We had to because there were 6,000 Japs holed up in one corner of the island. And we didn't, I didn't see anybody get hurt, get wounded or anything. Americans. You didn't see any Americans get No. I, I don't know of any that did. That, that night, that was in July. Uh, after it's all over, we left there and went back and got washed up and cleaned up and got ready for another trip. Can you talk to us about your memories of Okinawa before we go back through the whole thing? Oh, we, our outfit landed D-Day plus 10. That's 10, you know, 10 uh, days after the initial battle. And we went up and I was on the front line for a while. But I never, I didn't get to Naha. Naha was a big city. And, well, we did mostly protecting the Headquarters with our 37 millimeter and a tank gun, we 
was deployed different places. I was stayed there, and one night the Japs shell, shelled us pretty heavy. I was laying in the foxhole I had dug and a piece of shrapnel this long, as big as your finger, landed just a short distance from my head. I picked it up, it was still hot. Too hot, I laid it back down. And after that, the battle was over and we got to come home.